make us proud. Yet another Hillary becomes a sag, even more of a reason for us to brag. Psychology is for you, that's quite clear. We'll miss you so much when you leave next year. We'll miss you two times, have so much fun. Good luck in the fall. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School. It's Hopkinton Hillers softball, and it's senior night as they welcome in the Millis Mohawks. Millis eight and seven on the season. The Hillers are 13 and five. Heather Holly on the mound, and we are ready for softball action as Cheyenne Oelen, the shortstop, steps in for the Millis Mohawks. We'll run through the Millis batting order in just a moment, it's Cheyenne Whalen, the shortstop, leading things off. Emily Malowitz, the center fielder, batting second. Hannah Finley, the catcher, batting third. Abby Doyle, the pitcher, hitting cleanup. Carly Wenzel, the third baseman, batting fifth. Mackenzie Smith, the second baseman, batting sixth, as the first pitch is in there. And count one and oh. Amanda Gwinden, the left fielder, batting seventh. Alex Hill, the first baseman, batting eighth. A swinging strike there. And Finishing off the batting order is the right fielder, Vanessa Lopez. And we'll get you the Hillers diamond in just a moment. It is a beautiful sunny day here on this Friday afternoon as there is strike three, one away, and Emily Malowitz will come to the plate. That was a nice pitching sequence by Heather. You ever notice, Tom, that the shortstops seem to be the better athletes? Yeah, they certainly... Uh, and well, they have to be among the better athletes on the field they have to cover a lot of ground. That pitch down low, 1-0. Let's take a look at the Hillers diamond. Heather Hawley on the mound, Julia Cedia behind home plate. Maddie Abbott, the first baseman. Emily Whalen, the second baseman. Molly Bennett, the shortstop, as there's another strike. Emma Murphy at third base. From left to right, Lily Rancatori, Katie Hawley, and Lindsay Whittles for the Hopkinton Hillers who are 13 and two on the season as this is hit in the air and that is foul along the third base side. That's a good example of slash hitting. She might've had a double if it landed fair. One and two now. Millis fighting for a spot in the postseason, and they are two wins away, a crucial game for them here. Here's strike three, the throw down to first, no problem, two away. Two up, two down. Score that two, three. Strikeout. Yep. Hannah Finley, the catcher, will step in. Pretty similar offense for both these teams. As there's a swinging strike. The Hillers hitting a 325 on the season. The Mohawks hitting a 320 as a team. And Heather Hawley has been very good for the Hillers from the pitcher circle as there's another strike. Get you the stats on her when we have a moment. As she is ready to deal once again, the 0-2, just low, one and two. Heather wanted that pitch, thought she had the outside corner. Heather Holly, 10 wins, two losses in the pitcher's circle, 164 ERA, 13 appearances on the mound, 13 games started as that one's fouled away. The girls are doing something unusual today. They're not sitting in their little dugout, they're sitting outside the dugout for the first time this year. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting observation there, switching it up a little. So that's what I get away. paid for. That's to right. Observe. That's why you got the big bucks. Bob Hamilton on camera, Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. And you cannot ask for better weather than this for Hiller's softball. Swinging strike, one, two, three strikeouts. We'll wrap up the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. It's Hiller's softball on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning on this 89 degree sunny day at Hopkinton High School. It's Hiller's softball as Emily Whalen will step in to face Sabby Doyle, the Millis pitcher. Let's take a look at the Hillers batting order. Emily Whalen, the second baseman, batting first. Katie Holly, the center fielder, batting second. Molly Bennett, the shortstop, batting third. Heather Holly, the pitcher in the cleanup spot. Lindsey Whittles, the left fielder in the fifth spot. As 
Here is pitch number one and strike number one. Emma Murphy, the third baseman in the sixth spot. Maddie Bennett, the first baseman in the seventh spot as that one's in there for a strike. Lily Rancatori, the right fielder in the eighth spot and Julia Cedia, the catcher, finishing out the batting order for the Hopkinton Hillers. If the count is one and one, I think she'll go for a punt if it's... Up the middle, right to the shortstop, a line out for Whalen, one away. If it's not, and there were two strikes, the bunt play was off. I'll bring up Katie Holly, the center fielder. Let's take a look at the Millis Diamond. Abby Doyle on the mound, Hannah Finley, the catcher. Alex Hill at first base, Mackenzie Smith, the second baseman. Cheyenne Whalen, the shortstop, Carly Wenzel, the third baseman, as they break in the action here. From left to right, Amanda Gwinden, Emily Malowitz, and Vanessa Lopez for the Millis Mohawks. Here's our bunting friend coming up with the speed. Up in the box. Pitch to Holly in there for a strike. Doyle deals upstairs, one and one. Line up in the pitch. Hit in the air to left center, ranging over to make the catch is Malowitz, two away. She got a nice piece on that one. Nellis played that perfectly. We'll bring up Molly Bennett. Shortstop. She's having a pretty good year. 256 at the plate. That one's fouled away. 0 and 1. Has scored 17 runs, driven in eight. Let's take a look at the Millos pitcher, Abby Doyle. She is three and five on this season. 598 ERA, nine appearances, eight games started as there's a swinging strike 0 and 2. She doesn't have quite the speed that uh, Heather Hawley has, but it seems to be working right now. And she is a sophomore, and there's strike three. And throughout the last few games, she has just continued to develop her skills and become a solid pitcher for Millis. Well, that'll do it for the first inning. It is scoreless after one to the second we go on H camp. Top half of the second inning, a scoreless game between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Millis Mohawks. Two up for Millis, four, five, and six. Abby Doyle, the pitcher, steps in to face Heather Hawley, who struck out the side in the first inning. Abby Doyle, Carly Wenzel, Mackenzie Smith do up for the Mohawks. Millis led by head coach RJ Matoro as there is ball one. Not quite as hot as it was yesterday. Yesterday broke uh, all the records. I think it was 96 at Logan Airport. Yep, hottest day in Boston history. Right back to the pitcher on the ground. Little flip to first, not a problem. One to three goes Doyle. I think she underhand tossed based on the midfield game where she threw it 95 miles an hour to the first baseman and it was dropped. We have Carly Wenzel, the third baseman. There's a strike. Believe it or not, we are entering the last week of the season next week as this is hit into left center and ranging under to make the catch is Katie Holly. She had to run to her right a bit to get to that one, but not a problem two away. I thought that was JBJ in center field, the way she got a read on it. Bring up Mackenzie Smith, the second baseman. There's a strike. Hit in the air, it is a high fly ball. Emily Whalen has no problem. She had to battle the sun, but makes the catch. One, two, three, they go. To the bottom of the second, we go on H-Cam. 
Bottom of the second inning, four, five, and six do up for the Hillers. Heather Holly, the pitcher to start things off. Lizzie Whittles, the left fielder, will bat second. And Emma Murphy, the third baseman, to bat third. As Abby Doyle, the pitcher, set to deliver. A scoreless game between the Mohawks and the Hillers as we enter this bottom of the second. That one is just low. She deals, there's a strike. One and one. That one just low, two and one. Doyle delivers, low in the dirt, three and one. Well, this is the part of the batting order that has done a lot of damage this season for the Hillers. And they are hoping to repeat that this afternoon. She would become the first base runner in the game for either side. She walks, there it is, ball four. Yep, so lead hitter on for the Hillers. So walk to Heather Hawley and now Lindsay Whittles to step in. Pinch runner. Haley Keefe will be the pinch runner for the Hillers. As expected. Shortstop is playing on the lip of the grass. And the second baseman is playing in. I'm wondering whether Lindsay will show bunt and have the runner take off. Whittles has struggled a bit at the plate this season, a 211 batting average, but she has driven in six and scored 11 runs. That one is just outside. One and oh. She did walk one off against Medfield to center field. And they had the senior day festivities and they read a poem about each of the seniors that the underclassmen created as this is hit in the air and handled by the first baseman. Fall territory. One away. Says the umpire. Yep. Emma Murphy to step in. Ball one as the catcher looked over towards first. Pinch runner, Haley Keefe. Wind starting to pick up as expected. That one outside, one and one. It's very rare that there's a game at Hopkinton High School without some wind. Emma has to do something at the plate. She's got the, she's got the whole family here. Father Kevin. That one inside, two and one. Emma Murphy, a 250 batting average on the season. A little sister Lulu out in center field. And she'll draw the walk. Haley Keith moves up to second. Emma Murphy to first. Two on, one out. Maddie Bennett to the plate. Excuse me. Uh, Madison Abbott to the plate. As this is hit in the air, and it is going to be handled by the shortstop. Hopkins and runners were stuck to the base like glue, not even going a quarter of the ways down the baseline just in case that so shortstop uh, missed it, but it might have been called an infield fly. There's a strike. Madison Abbott flies out. And strike two to Rankatori, the right fielder. That is fouled away. Hey, hey, hey. 
There's strike three. So after letting two runners on via the walk, Abby Doyle gets out of it unharmed. It is a scoreless game as we head to the top of the third. Top of the third inning, seven, eight, nine, due up for Millis as Amanda Gwinden set to step in to face Heather Holly. Wind up and the pitch, that's fouled away. She was a little behind on that pitch. It has been one, two, three innings so far for Holly. There's strike two. Oh, and two to Gwinden. Up the middle on the ground, glove by Willen. No, bobbled, and she's safe on the air. Ellis gets its first hit of the afternoon. Yeah, rare mishap there by Whalen, and that'll bring up Alex Hill, the first baseman. Alex Hill. Showed bunt and pulled it back. Yeah, 185 on the season, but a whole lot of speed. Holly deals. The bunt fouled away. Emma Murphy charging all the way on that play. You can see how shallow she's playing. Holly deals. The bunt. And it is up the middle, fair territory, and no play. Great bunt, and it took an awkward halt as it was starting to roll up the dirt. And Hill beats it out. And Holly did not want to miss the overthrow. So now you have two on with no outs. Vanessa Lopez, the right fielder to the plate. Vanessa is a senior. That one's fouled away. 500 batting average on the season, but she's played in only six games. Eight for 16 at the plate. She has come on strong as of late. That's why she's in the starting lineup for Millis. There's a strike. She went for that one with the bunt, and Millis certainly in uh, manufacturing run mode here. If she turns around and bunts again, Side one and two. It's for a base hit. She does want to move the runners up though, get them in second and third. And there's a strike and an out, one away. Fourth strikeout of the afternoon for Holly, and that'll bring up Cheyenne Whalen. Swing strike there. She didn't get cheated at all. Holly set to deal. That one just inside, one and one. CD trying to hold that pitch for the umpire, but he's been consistent on both sides of the plate. Holly deals, hit in the air, and it is caught by Holly. Good defensive play there. And that was certainly a play worth making rather than taking the risk to see if it would land foul. Usually that's catcher's ball with that backspin. Brought good communication there. She called CD off and made the play herself. As Emily Malowitz set the step in. Fouled away, 0-1. Oh, oh, it's with the running start to her swing. 217 on the season. This is her ninth game of action. She has scored three, driven in two. Up the middle, and that is past Holly, and the throw to first, they got her. 
No, actually, everybody's safe. I thought they might have had her, but they call her safe. That was close and a great play by Molly Bennett. She nearly had her. That's a single for Malowitz, and that'll bring up Anna Finley to catch her. So it's bases loaded with two outs. A crucial situation here. There's strike one. Cedia pulled that ball in. She only is going to get three or four of those cheats in a game. That's the maximum an umpire will allow. If you do it on every pitch, they'll see movement. They'll call it a ball. That one just upstairs. One and one. Hit in the air over to right field, and it's off the glove of Rankatori. One run in, a second run in, and they are going to clear the base pass. Three runs in for Millis, and that is going to turn into a crucial error for Hopkinton. And Rankatori had a battle to Sun out there in right field and just could not make that catch. Went right off the inside of her glove. And Gwendon Hill and Malowitz all score. So 3 0 Millis, pinch runner in for the Mohawks. As the sophomore Moriarty will come in. And a good piece of hitting by Finley. Got the job done. But I'm calling that an error, uh, Larry. I, I feel like that was a routine fly ball. Popped in and out of her glove. But when your eyes are moving up and down, chasing a fly ball, it's not the easiest thing in the world. And this is a little bloop shot over to Whalen. She'll throw to first and get the out. But Millis, they played three runs, and it's 3 nothing Mohawks heading to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third inning, and the Hillers offense has some work to do after Millis comes up with three runs in the top of the inning. It all started when Amanda Gwendon reached on a rare error by Emily Whalen. Then Alex Hill singled. Vanessa Lopez struck out for the first out. And then a fly out by Cheyenne Wilson. You think the Hillers will get out of the jam. But then Emily Malowitz with a single to load up the bases. And we'll continue the recap after that. As that one is just outside, 1-0 to Julia Cedia, the catcher. And then Hannah Finley. Reaches on the error, and drives in three runs in the process. Drop ball by Rankatori in right field on the pop-up. One and one now to count to Cedia. She was about ready to turn on that ball and pulled her hands back. Swinging strike. One and two to the catcher, who has been very solid behind the plate this season for the Hillers. Freshman and crushes this one in the right field. That's going to drop down for a base hit. She's going to round first, head to second, and it's a stand up double for the catcher, Julia Cedia. I Good think the piece coach, of hitting. I think the coach will pinch run for her now. How about Julia Cedia, freshman, a 387 batting average coming into this game? Three runs scored, driven in 13 so far, three doubles to her credit. She has a whole lot of power. And just a great hitter, great defensive player. She's gonna be a huge asset for this team for the next three seasons as Katie Sylvester will come in to pinch run. Emily Whalen always a threat to bunt. And Millis has got that smoked out right now, playing in at both corners. Well, this is what you want if you're the Hillers. Emily Whalen at the plate with a runner on second. Emily Whalen, a sophomore, 400 batting average on the season. That one outside. She has played in all games this season. Actually, she's played in 14. She missed one game due to injury. And actually, it was sickness. And that was the game against Medfield. That one's fouled away. She has scored 14 runs, driven in 10, three doubles, two triples. I think Emily Whalen and Julia Cedia are a uh, safe bet to say they'll probably be two of the team leaders for the next couple of seasons. 
On the ground, up the middle, past the glove of the second baseman, and the lead runner going to be waved around third. Here comes Katie Sylvester, the pinch runner, for one run, and it's a double for Whalen. That was a fundamental miscue by Millis. Nobody was covering the second base bag, so Whalen saw that. She walked in. Well, the Hiller is pretty quick to respond to that three run top of the third by Millis. And now we'll have an infield discussion in the pitcher's circle. Mohawk's going to try to give Abby Doyle some words of encouragement and talk things over as Katie Holly set to step in. Another dangerous hitter for the Hillers, one of the leading hitters in the state. A 447 batting average. 13 runs scored, 17 driven in, four doubles, a triple and a homer. And Katie Holly, another sophomore who's expected to do big things throughout her softball career. Mills broke the cardinal sin that would happen in baseball and softball, leaving a base abandoned. As this is a liner, that'll drop in a right field. Whalen being waved around third, and she is going to score the second Hiller's run. An RBI single for Katie Holly. Three to two, Millis. Still no outs in the inning. Molly Bennett, the shortstop, two step in. The Millfield, uh, Millis infield is playing very far apart. I think uh, she might swipe this bag outright. Now one is a strike, grabs the outside corner. Well, it's been an action packed third, that's for sure. As this is hit in the air, out of play foul on the right side. Souvenir for the group of fans that are gathered along the right side fence. Do they get to keep those balls here? No. Not enough of a budget for that. This is hit in the air, a high fly ball over to the right side and it is caught in foul territory. And that's the first out of the inning as Lopez ranges over to make the catch. It'll bring up Heather Hawley, the pitcher, who will try to help her own cause. All three of the Millis runs are unearned. The bunt pulled back, runner taking off from first, throw to second, a good throw, but too much speed by Katie Holly. That was a nice throw by Hannah Finley, but Holly showing off the wheels. Millis Hopkinton baseball team tied at three over in Millis. As we'll get a pitcher circle discussion, the Millis coach also not happy with the safe call, but she looks safe uh, to me, Larry. Oh, she was safe, standing up. There you have it. If Larry says she's safe, she's safe. I have that type of power. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Hiller softball. Tom Hamilton on camera. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball in the infield, and that'll be caught by the pitcher, two away. Two straight fly outs. So we do have a score from Millis High with the boys varsity team. Tom, you wanna handle that? Yeah, I uh, just mentioned it was three to three. Is that what you were showing me over there? Yep, Anthony Farine and Alex Reynolds, home runs. Lindsay Whittles steps in, runner on second, and the lefty will take ball one. One and oh. We'll be following Hiller's softball and baseball throughout the postseason, broadcasting as many games as possible. This is hit foul on the left side into the woods. Line up and the pitch, and there's a strike, one and two. Holly's getting a generous lead, almost heading right in front of the shortstop's face. 
Well, he has a 500 on base percentage. So that one is just outside of Whittles. She also has two stolen bases on the season coming into this game. Of course, the one that just happened a few minutes ago is her third of the season. Three for three overall. Up the right side, that's going to get through. Holly around third, and the throw cut off. It's a tie game, an RBI single for Whittles. I think Lindsay Whittles becoming Mrs. Clutch on this team. What a big hit there. We saw one uh, walk-off homer already this season. Now the RBI single to tie things up at three apiece as Emma Murphy steps in. The Millis coach is incensed that the ball was caught off, but uh, that was the right play. They would have never got Holly at home. That one is low. And I got one of your uh, little friends off you that were giving you a hard time during the baseball game yesterday. Those little uh, gypsy moth caterpillars. They're everywhere, I tell you, they're everywhere. They, they like you a lot, Larry. I don't know what it is. That one's upstairs, 2-0. Nothing a little prednisone won't cure. I think Bob Hamilton has been afflicted as well. You got me paranoid now. I've never been uh, bit by one knock on wood as that one is in there for a strike. But seeing uh, what they did to you, a little bit nervous now. Whenever I see one, I'm, I'm uh, getting it away from me. As this is a liner in a center field, that'll drop in. Whittles around second, heading to third. The throw to third is going to be dropped by the third baseman. They should have had her, but Carly Wenzel couldn't hold on. And it is a single by Murphy. She advanced to second on the throw. She ran opposite the third baseman's glove side, or she ran into the third baseman's glove side more to the home plate side at third base, and that might have been the difference. Now the Mohawks assistant coach out there to talk with the pitcher and the infield as set to step in for the Hillers is the first baseman, Maddie Abbott. 292 on the season for the senior. She has scored three, driven in four. She has developed into a very solid first baseman for the Hillers. Uh, it looks like the girls have the Hillers tent up. They didn't get the H cam tent down for us today. <laughs> well, Millis, they got the woods for a tent. They got a lot of shade over in that bench area. The Hillers, they're directly in the sun, so they certainly need that tent. So it's a two out situation. Runners on second and third. And we are tied at three apiece. Both teams have scored three runs in this third inning. Hopkinton very aggressive on the base paths. That one low, good eye. Abby Doyle set to deliver. The sophomore deals just outside. 2-0. and oh. Well, first base open, two on. Pretty dangerous hitter at the plate. And this one is hit up the middle, bobbled by the shortstop, throw to first, and they got her. And that was a good call by the up. They certainly got her, but there's Definitely a close play, but the Hillers, despite giving up three runs in the top of the inning, they give it right back on the bottom. It's three to three as we head to the fourth. Top half of the fourth, a three to three game between Millis and Hopkinton. Five, six, and seven due up for the Mohawks. Carly Wenzel, the third baseman set to step in. Mackenzie Smith, the second baseman after that. And Amanda Gwynn in the left fielder to bat third in the inning. Hawley gave up three runs in the top of the inning, but none of them were earned. All of them scored via an error in right field. It turned into a three RBI base hit for Finley. Well, three, three RBI reaching on an error, as there's a strike. This hitter can't obviously hit a two run homer, so a base hit will have to do. As this is hit foul above us, so in two. And the 
TVL, certainly a lot of fun this season on the softball side. You got Norton, Hopkinton, Medway, Millis all having great seasons. And of course there's a, and Medfield, they're having a nice season as well. well you, sh you should at least have five playoff teams out of the TVL as that one is ball one, one and two. It's 10 and in, Tom? 10 and in for the girls? Yep, 10 and in. Or 500 and in, 500 or better. So Millis is fighting for their playoffs lives here today. Yeah, they certainly are. They still need a couple wins to get in. There are a couple teams that play 22, so they need 11. Holly deals. Up the right side, glove by Willen. Throw to first, not a problem. Four to three goes Wenzel. I'll bring up Mackenzie Smith, the second baseman. Looks like Heather has settled down a bit, getting that first out out of the way. Swinging strike. There's strike two. Looks like uh, Heather has this young lady's number already today. She's been out front, and that one was blown by her. There's another one blown by her for strike number three, out number two. Amanda Gwinden to step in. Come on, little. Bunted foul. Well, that wasn't your ideal bunt attempt. Her bat was tipped in the down direction, so that's Going to go up the first baseline. Holly deals. Strike two. Another Holly with five strikeouts on the afternoon. There's strikeout number six, out number three, and the end of the top of the fourth. It's a three to three ball game as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth inning, eight, nine, and one, due up for the Hillers as Lily Rancatori, the right fielder, will step in. Julia Cedia to follow after that, and Emily Whalen will bat third in the inning. We do have a score from Mill Millis on the varsity softball game. It's five to three, Millis, with Tommy Leone for Hoppington towing the rubber. Hillers, of course, uh, still fighting to officially lock up a playoff spot and to get some high seating. Well, there's softball already in the postseason, but they are fighting hard for a top seed in a very tough Division II bracket. That one just outside to Rankatori. You hate to see them draw that buzzsaw out of Norton in the first round. I don't think it'll happen, but she was tough. Norton actually, I believe, is division three for softball. One and one, so they would not see each other in the playoffs. One and two to Rankatori. Thank God for that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But still a very tough bracket. That one just high, two and two. Got Milford in there. They've already locked up a playoff spot. Of course, they're going to be one of the higher seeds, as well as Hopkinton. Swing strike, out number one. Julia Cedia to step in. Hiller's boys lacrosse celebrated their senior night. They had a tough loss to a very good Westwood team, 11-10. Game went down to the wire, and the boys lacrosse team expected to do big things in the postseason as well. There was a strike to Cedia, who doubled and scored a run last inning. And that's what really got the Hillers rally started was her double. That was a ball.
ball outside. She's, she's showing some nice patience at the plate. Line up in the pitch. And she crushes this one over to center field, but it's the deepest part of this Hillers ballpark. And that will be handled by Malowitz. Two away. Bring that up. had to go 330 feet, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, a lot of uh, ballparks, that would have been out of here. And if that went to the left, or maybe even the right, that would have been gone. Emily Whalen to step in, second baseman. We have to encourage him to get the uh, markings out there on that outfield fence. If you're listening, Hopkinton High School, there's a strike to Whalen. They are playing Emily Whalen to bunt for sure. Runs at that one, but holds her swing one and one. She had no intention on butting on that one. She was going to slash hit down the third base line. She's going to swing for this one and foul it away one and two. Now she's in the hole with two strikes. She's got to hit away. Just low. 2-2 two, two count. And that is fouled towards us. Good battle going on here between Abby Doyle and Emily Whalen. A battle of the sophomores. That was your ball, Bob, wasn't it? Up the middle, glove by the second baseman, throw to first, not a problem. One, two, three, they go. To the top of the fifth we go. Millis three, Hopkinton three on H cam. Top of the fifth, a good battle here between the Millis Mohawks and the Hopkinton Hillers. A three to three ball game. Due up for Millis, eight, nine, and one. Alex Hill, the first baseman, to step in right now. Vanessa Lopez, the right fielder, and Cheyenne Willen. A shortstop to bat third, eight, nine, and one, as there's a strike from Holly. She deals to Hill, the bunt fouled away. They had everybody charging on that. Set to deliver. Swinging strike, out number one. Holly racking up the Ks today. CD didn't throw down to first base because the batter walked out of the batter's box, so she was automatically out. Seven strikeouts on the afternoon for Holly. Fouled into the catcher's glove, 0 and 1. We'll pause here. The umpire having a discussion with the catcher. Oh, umpire checking up on her. A little professional courtesy. And that is hit foul up the left side. 0 and 2. Nessa Lopez, an even 500 batting average coming into today, but she strikes out there. K number eight for Holly. CD is very fundamentally sound behind the plate. She could use a little work on her blocking and receiving. If her parents are listening, there's the New England Catchers Camp up in Hudson, New, New Hampshire. They come from all over the country to learn how to catch. Well, the Hillers, they will have a big spot filled for the next three seasons as that one's followed away. Catcher, of course, is one of the toughest roles to fill, or at least to have a reliable catcher. And in Julia Cedia, you certainly have 
a very reliable catcher, as well as a great hitter. Now one outside, one and one to Cheyenne Whalen. Whalen 0 for 2 on the afternoon. What I like about CD is she throws the back, throws the ball back hard to the pitcher, even with runners on base. That one upstairs, one and two. Up the left side, that'll get by for a base hit. Murphy stuck out that glove, but couldn't get to it in time. A single for Whaling. Two out single, and Emily Malowitz coming to the plate. At best, if she had dove for it, she would have knocked it down, but the runner would have been safe. Up the middle, slow roller, glove by Willen, throw to first, not a problem. Four to three goes Malowitz, and that'll wrap up the top of the fifth. To the bottom of the inning we go. Millis three, Hopkinton three on HKM. Bottom of the fifth inning, two, three, and four are due up for the Hillers. Katie Holly to step in the center fielder. One for two on the afternoon. She singled and scored a run in the third. And that was actually an RBI single in the third, which scored Julia Cedia. That one's low. Actually, first single scored Emily Whalen. Cedia scored on the Emily Whalen double. That was I, part of the three run rally for the Hillers. I thought for sure she was going to bunt on her first attempt, but that's good enough. Yeah, that'll get by for a base hit. Around first goes Holly, and she will go back to first. A nice single there. And that took a dead stop soon as it landed, as it was kind of on the border of the dirt and the grass on that left corner. Molly Bennett will step in. That was a perfect example of a slash hit by a left-handed batter right over the third baseman's head. And Holly just continuing to impress offensively. Bunt up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the pitcher. The throw gets by, everybody safe. Holly to third. The runners on the corners, no outs. Well, Larry, what do you call that one? Single, error? That's a tough one. Yeah, it's a bunt single and an error. But there was quite a collision over there at first base. Millis' first error of the game. Yeah, certainly an error on the throw, but as far as that bunt, that was a nicely placed bunt. She would have beaten it out regardless. Coach Soderberg over to talk to Molly Bennett. And that is... Well, there's a pitcher circle discussion. Maybe checking up on her because she took a hard collision as that throw came in and she fell to the ground. You see the dirt on the back of her jersey. Heather Hawley steps in, trying to help her own cause here. Two on, no outs for the Hillers in this bottom of the fifth. Will they squeeze for a run? It's possible, especially with Hawley at third. And that is hit in the air above us foul, 0 and 1. Abby Doyle set to deal. Outside, 1 and 1. Molly Bennett at first, Katie Holly at third. Does Coach Soderberg have a play on where the first base, runner on first base will steal? Up the middle, and that is going to slow roll, be bobbled by the shortstop, one run is in and everybody's safe. An RBI single for Holly, and that rolled so slow, that is a tough one to give an error to, just an awkward roll there, but could have been an error, but either way, the Hillers will take the lead. And a pinch runner is in for Heather Hawley. Haley Keith, the junior, back into the game. So now you got two on, no outs, and Lindsay Whittles coming to the plate. And she's gonna have a few words with Coach Soderberg before she steps in the batter's box. A double steal here would be demoralizing for Millis. The way 
Lindsay is swinging the bat. She shows bunt that third baseman is already left and abandoned third base. Fouled away. 0 oh and 1. Killers have taken the lead. One already in in this bottom of the fifth. Two on base, no outs. That one's low. One and one on Whittles. Whittles one for two on the day. An RBI single in the third. Score the game tying run at that time. That one's low. Nice job by Hannah Finley, the catcher, keeping it in front. Haley Keith, the pinch runner for Heather Hawley at first. Molly Bennett at second. Doyle deals upstairs. Molly Bennett is getting an absolute monstrous lead out at second base. Yeah, she was halfway down the base paths. Had to go back to second. Three and one. There's strike two. That'll fill up the count. Emma Murphy due up next. Doyle deals up the middle, and it is gloved by the second baseman. A flip to second for one. A run will score. Five to three, Hillers. It is going to be a nice piece of hitting by Whittles to get the job done. Holly, the pinch runner for Holly, thrown out on the force out, but the run is in. Ever since she hit that walk-off home run, she's starting to really hit the ball. So six to four RBI force out. Nice sacrifice there by Whittles. Who stands over at first base, Sam and Murphy to step in. That's fouled away, 0 and 1. And that's the good thing about this Hillers team. They have had their flaws defensively at times this season. For the most part, pretty consistent, but they certainly have the offense to make up for it usually, as that one's upstairs. Emma has a beautiful stroke during her practice swings, but does not translate in the batter's box. That one upstairs, the catcher flinches towards first, but holds. Emma Murphy, a junior, at a 250 batting average this season. There's a strike, nice breaking pitch, which grabs the outside corner. That one's outside, and a flinch once again towards first by Finley. Keep Whittles there. Up the left side, and that'll get into left field. Everybody will be safe. A single for Murphy, Whittles up to second. And Emma Murphy having a nice day at the plate. Two for two and a walk. As Maddie Abbott, the first baseman, will step in. Two outs, or one out in the inning. Two on for the Hillers. Big opportunity here to add more to the two-run lead. That one up high, good pull down by Finley. Finley has been busy behind the plate this inning. Abby Doyle deals downstairs, 2-0. Nice block by the catcher. Maddie Abbott at a 292 mark coming into this game. And they'll have a discussion in the pitcher circle. Will they have a pitching change? Yes. As of right now, uh, I don't see if he took the ball. They will. All right, so there will be a pitching change here. But a pretty good performance by Abby Doyle. The sophomore getting some good experience against a good Hillers lineup. And while Millis gets the 
New pitcher warmed up. We'll take a timeout. It's five to three. Hopkinton leading Millis in the bottom of the fifth. It's Hiller's soft. Continuing on in the bottom of the fifth. Two runs already in for the Hillers. Two on, one out, a new pitcher in for Millis. It's Carly Wenzel moving over from third base as there's a strike. Alex Hill, the first baseman to start the game, is now at third. And over at first is the starting pitcher, Abby Doyle. Fouled away. Two strikes on... Matty Abbott, runners on first and second for the Hillers. Emma Murphy at first, Lindsey Whittles at second. Wenzel deals, hit in the air, a high fly ball over the head of the shortstop, she'll make the catch. Two away. We'll bring up Lily Rancatori, the right fielder. And Carly Wenzel trying to stop the bleeding for the Mohawks. So far, so good. That one is low. Carly Wenzel, a senior. And this is her fourth appearance in the pitcher circle on the season. A .70 ERA, two and one overall. Nine strikeouts, and she's been getting a lot more work and relief as of late due to her consistency. She's given up 10 runs, but only two of those were earned. 2-0 pitch. Up the middle it goes, and that'll get through the gap for a base hit. Whittles waved around third, and that is the six-hillers run. And then Murphy goes up to third, and the throw goes off the glove of the third baseman. So Murphy safe at third base. An RBI single for Rankatori. She moves up to second on the throw. That ball had eyes, Tom. That is just what the doctor ordered for the Hillers. Now you got Julia Cedia at the plate. One for two on the day. She's a double and scored a run in the third as runner over at second base, Rankatori taking a big lead. Base hit will score two here. Down low. One and one. Wenzel deals. Nice breaking pitch. Fooled Cedia there, one and two. Up and the pitch. Inside, two and two. That Nearly ball. got by Finley, but a nice job by Finley keeping it in front. Ball almost got out of play. That would have played it a run. Emma Murphy at third. Lily Rankatori at second. Julia Cedia at the plate. Two and two. And she gets a piece of this one, and it's caught by the first baseman on the little bloop shot. And that'll wrap up the bottom of the fifth, but the Hillers plate three more runs. It's six to three as we head to the sixth inning on H Cam. Top half of the sixth inning, the Hillers have claimed the lead. But due up for Millis is three, four, and five. Hannah Finley, Abby Doyle, and Carly Wenzel to face Heather Hawley, who is pitching a gem. All three runs for Millis unearned. And Hawley has eight strikeouts so far in the afternoon. <laughs> Finley steps in. She is 0 for 2, reached on an error in the third. It's this one in the air, a high fly ball, and calling off Hawley is Murphy. She'll make the catch, one away. Oh no, excuse me, she did not make it. I looked down before uh, that play was over. Shouldn't have done that. So uh, Finley reaches. That was a rough play there. Pinch runner coming in. It looked routine to me. I thought you would handle that one. But you got to score that in E5 if you want to be oh, fair absolutely. and consistent. Or fair and balanced. 
Score that in a, an error on the third baseman and an error on the announcer. There's a strike. It's my first error all year though, not too bad. No kidding. <laughs> Holly deals, a swinging strike there, 0-2. I think the Hopkins and Little League president has sent out an email to all the Little Leaguers to come watch the senior boys on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, depending on weather. Oh, we'll have the annual Little League day. Abby Doyle strikes out, one away, one on. Carly Wenzel to the plate. 0-1, nine strikeouts for Holly. Racking them up today. Liner that'll drop into center field and be quickly gathered up by Holly. But that'll put two on with one out. A single for Wenzel. Finley up to second. Mackenzie Smith to the plate. And we'll have Time called here by Coach Soderberg. He wants to talk to his infield and his pitcher. Heather Hawley had 95 strikeouts coming into today's game and 81 innings pitched. It's more than a strikeout per inning and almost averaging strikeouts per game. Just a little under. But this game certainly above that average with nine and Still a couple more innings to go. Kenzie Smith stepping back in. Holly set the deal. The bunt fouled away. And I think that's exactly what Coach Soderberg was talking to his infield about. Yeah, Emma Murphy stayed, stayed home at third base and the first baseman and the pitcher were charging on that. That's the right play. She deals, the bunt is foul, 0-2. And, and that was fortunate for the Hillers that that took the bounce foul. And this is up the left side, that's foul. Kenzie Smith, a freshman for the Mohawks. Pretty good season at the plate, 259 overall. Seven runs scored, two driven in. As there is a ball, one and two. Swinging strike and that is an out. Tenth strikeout of the afternoon for Holly. Two away. Amanda Gwendon to step in. That was a present and it even was gift wrapped. As this has popped up, foul territory right near us. Oh and one. I wasn't worried. Bob. I lost it in the sun. I was battling the sun there myself. You gotta learn how to multitask, avoid foul balls and keep announcing. There's strike two. And both runners taking off, it was a double steal attempt and the throw got by in the left field but quickly gathered up by Whittles. Both runners did advance, so now it's second and third with two outs. And that was a pretty good play call there by the Millis Mohawks, they certainly need to Get some momentum in their favor. Yo, two to Gwinden. That is fouled away. Coach Soderberg is ready for it. Quite an arm there. Fuck that one right to Holly. Come on, 
That is popped up left side, handled by the third baseman, Emma Murphy. No problem. To the bottom of the six we go. The Hillers leading Miller six to three on each cam. Bottom of the sixth inning for the Hillers, one, two, and three do up. Emily Whalen, the second baseman. Katie Holly, the center fielder. Molly Bennett, the shortstop. To face Carly Wenzel. She came in in relief last inning for Abby Doyle. All three of the runs last inning were charged to Doyle. The bunt, or the attempted bunt by Whalen held up, but it's strike one. I think they had a defensive switch. First baseman to third baseman. Yeah, they had that once they brought in the new pitcher. That one upstairs, one and one. Yep, the starting pitcher, Abby Doyle, took over at first base, and Alex Hill, the first baseman, moved to third. Up the right side, gloved by Doyle, and she'll have no problem tagging the bag. One away. Katie Hawley to step in. Hawley, a good candidate for player of the game. Two for three at the plate. She scored two runs and has an RBI and a stolen base to her credit. There's a strike. Up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop, and it's a single. She's going to keep going as it was bobbled by Gwendon in left field. She couldn't get her glove around it, and Holly will advance on the error. A single and then a reach to second on an error. Now will bring up Molly Bennett one on one out. I don't think she likes the slide. She wants to wear those pants the next game without washing them. Second time she's gone in the second without sliding. She's been a great base runner though. Line up in the pitch, swinging strike. Just a little late on that one. Set to deliver, breaking pitch just inside. I don't know how she laid off that one. The one one. Upstairs. Bennett having a pretty good day. One for three at the plate. Singleton scored a run in the fifth. Swinging strike. Two and two. Set to deal. Upstairs. Full count. Wenzel delivers, fouled away. Good battle. Molly Bennett was at a 256 mark heading into this game. I'm trying to keep the eye on the pitcher to see whether she puts her index finger on the seam of the ball to get a rise ball action. Swinging strike, Wenzel gets the best of that battle, two away. Heather Hawley to step in. Hawley singled in the fifth last inning and walked in the second. Runner on second, two outs. Up the right side, bobbled by the second baseman, but she picks it up, throw to first, no problem. Four to three goes Hawley. And we will head to the top of the seventh. The Mohawks are down to their final three outs on each cam. Top half of the seventh inning, the Mohawks down to their final three outs. Eight, nine, and one do up. Alex Hill, Vanessa Lopez, and Cheyenne Whalen to face Heather Hawley, who is 
aiming to complete her ninth game of the season. And she has pitched a gem here this afternoon. And she hopes to continue on. She has 10 strikeouts so far today. Swinging strike there, 0-1 oh to Hill. Hill Singleton scored one of the three runs in the third. The bunt, slow roller up the middle, picked up by Holly, throw to first, one away. Good throw by Holly. One to three on a speedy base runner. We'll bring up Vanessa Lopez, the right fielder. Holly has struck her out twice so far this afternoon. Swinging strike there. Killers are able to get these final two outs. They'll improve to 14 and two on the season. Strike two. Just low, one and two. Heather wanted that pitch, and Cedia wanted that pitch. The umpire said no. There's strike three, two away. The 11 strikeout for Holly. Down to their final out. Cheyenne Whalen, the shortstop to the plate. Just low, one and oh. Holly deals, hit in the air, and that is foul. And that'll make it one and one. Good catch by a uh, crowd member, and I was hiding behind Bob, I must admit. That's a Cooper rider. He had all four, <laughs> four girls go through the program. I could not see where that one was at all. So I saw I feel, it all the way. I feel for these outfielders now. One pulled back, two and one. They need base hits right now. Raylan one for three on the afternoon. Down to the final strike here, and that is ball two. Or excuse me, ball three, three and one. And there's a strike that'll fill up the count. Cedia stuck that ball. She's got very strong hands. Fouled away, good battle between Holly and Whalen. Just upstairs, and that is the first walk of the afternoon by Holly. Emily Malowitz, the center fielder, to step in. What's she done today, Tom? Malowitz went for three. Singleton scored a run in the third. And we'll hit this one in the left field, but it is right to Lindsay Whittles, who makes the catch for the third and final out. And the Hopkinton Hillers will grab the victory over the Millis Mohawks. Six to three is the final score. The Hillers score six runs on 11 hits, commit three errors, while Millis scores three runs on four hits and commits two errors. Let's go right into the recap. Top of the third, the Mohawks plated three runs. Julia Cedia started off the inning with a double, and then an RBI 
hit by Whalen would score the first run, and then Katie Holly came up with the single uh, for, or excuse me, I'm actually reading the uh, bottom of the third. Let's start off with the top of the third. That might be a good idea. All right, top of the third, Amanda Gwinden started things off for Millis. She reached on an error. Alex Hill hit a single. That would put two on with no outs. Vanessa Lopez struck out, two on, one out. Cheyenne Whalen flew out. That was the second out of the inning. So you would think maybe Holly can get out of this jam, but then Emily Malowitz singled. That loaded up the bases, still no runs in, but then Hannah Finley hit a fly ball to right field, a routine fly. Lily Rancatori had to battle the sun a little bit, but it went right out of the inside of her glove, and that would clear the bases. Three runs scored on that mishap, and then Abby Doyle grounded out to end the inning. The Hillers responded right back in the bottom of the third. Cedia started off the inning with a double, and then an RBI double by Emily Whalen would score Cedia. And then Katie Holly came up and continued the rally with an RBI single to score Whalen. That made it 3-2. to two. Molly Bennett then flew out. Heather Holly flew out, but then an RBI single by Lindsay Whittles tied things up. Emma Murphy singled, but then Maddie Abbott would ground out to end the inning. 3-3 three to three was the score until the bottom of the fifth when the Hillers rallied once again. Katie Holly started off with a single, and then Molly Bennett would hit another single to put two on with no outs. And then Heather Holly came up and she would load up the bases. Lindsay Whittles knocked in the first run with a sacrifice force out. Emma Murphy then hit a single and we had a pitching change. Maddie Abbott would fly out and then an RBI single by Lily Rancatori. And the Hillers uh, put up three runs in the bottom of the fifth. Six to three was the score, and that's how it would stay for the rest of the game as Heather Holly pitched a gem. Those three runs unearned. Holly pitches her ninth complete game of the season, and she had 11 strikeouts throughout the afternoon. A great win by the Hillers. Millis falls to eight and eight on this season. The Hopkinton Hillers improved to 14 and two, trying to rack up as many wins as possible for the high postseason spot. For Bob Hamilton on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. This has been a presentation of Hopkinton Hiller softball on HCAM. The final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers take down the Millis Mohawks six to three. We thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll talk to you soon.